Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me um, on another lesson uh, about VMware SD1. Um, for those of you who haven't uh, caught up with my first episode, I described the shift in wide area networks from a traditional way of doing things, that is by using private lines and backhauling all the traffic back to your own data center and potentially breaking out to the internet, to a brand new way of seeing things. And we discussed how traditional networks are not really optimized for cloud-based applications and also cannot cope with the increased traffic coming in from the branch. Remember, your guests want access, your employees might be using their own devices, you might be using yourself bandwidth hungry applications. Um, and last but not least, you now have IoT coming up. So today I'm going to discuss on a high level each of the three uh, SD1 components of VMware um, and then I'm going to follow up with more details in later sessions. So I drew up a, a map of a network. We have a couple of branches here on the left hand side. We also have a data center or headquarters on the right hand. Um, we connect everything with uh, the internet, but again, please don't take this as the only way things work, right? As you can see, we don't really have much resilience, uh, we don't have private circuits here. It's just an easy example to show you how each component fits. So we start with the easiest step, and that is what we call the edge. You also see it referred to as the Velo Cloud Edge or VMware SD1 Edge, VCE. Now, the edges are the ones that connect your local area network, your trusted part with the wide area network, wherever that's the public internet um, presented as a wide broadband or an LTE circuit or um, private links. Again, it doesn't really matter. SD1 is a technology that is transport agnostic. Now, the easiest way to visualize the edge is a box itself, like a, um, the router you have at home, right? You get private addresses downstream. You might have maybe layer three switches, internal routers, doesn't really matter. And then all the traffic potentially gets natted and pushed towards the internet. Now, on the data center side, we also need an edge. Now, I do this behind the firewall because when we're deploying edges as hubs, the best way of doing this is behind the main site firewall as a VPN concentrate. Again, I didn't take into consideration any resiliency that you might put here, any active standby or clustering. We will be discussing this in further lessons. The edge does come up in a box format from small desk sizes all the way to uh, one rack unit pizza boxes, but also can come virtualized. So if you're interested in running a UCP type of scenario in which you use um, VMware SD1 as the way to connect the offices, but then you service chain different things, such as, for example, uh, next generation security, you can do that. So the solution has the flexibility to offer the edge in both physical hardware and just software forms. I also want to note that some of the hardware we do as edges do support security VNFs, so then you can serve this chain it with things such as Palo Alto, Checkpoint, or Fortinet virtual images. And this is to secure the edge, right? Think about this. Back in the old days, we used to take all the traffic from the branches through a private link all the way to the data center. And then we use this firewall to make sure nothing can come in and compromise our local area. Now, because we're introducing direct internet access, we want to make sure that you know, the internet-bound traffic can go out as fast as it can, as optimal as it can. 
each of those branches becomes a security risk. So we can integrate with things such as, again, the VNFs. Uh, we can potentially push traffic to cloud firewalls such as ZZ Scaler. And we also have native firewall capabilities built in the box. Again, more details in a next session. So we covered the data plane aspect, right? So the edges themselves will connect. We create tunnels. And then based on these tunnels, we will then start forward traffic. Now, what actually allows you to manage all these edges? Remember, back in the old days, we used to manage routers one by one via CLI. That was not really effective in bringing a branch up or pushing new settings. With SD1, we're going to a centralized way of managing things. And this is done via the control. Hello Cloud Orchestrator. The orchestrator in itself is hosted primarily by Velo Cloud. So we patch it, we push all the security features, there's nothing for you to worry about. Some service providers or some enterprises that are really security focused can potentially host this on premise. Again, it comes with a few disadvantages because if you host it on premise, you have to have the skills to patch it, troubleshoot it. Um, so my recommendation is always, always go with the cloud option if possible. Now the orchestrator is presented as a simple UI in which you can provision all these boxes even before you send them to the site and then gather information from them. So once the edge gets activated, it will then build a TLS tunnel with the orchestrator. It will authenticate itself and then through this tunnel, it will pull configuration and then also it will push information and alarms. Now, for those of you who uh, want to take this information further, you can integrate this into your existing OSS and PSS systems because the orchestrating itself does support things such as syslog, SNMP, and even APIs. It's very easy to provision things from a UI However, with APIs, you can actually script this and push changes even faster. Really, really useful for deployments that need to be speed up and obviously our service providers and partners who do this in mass. So far, so good. We have the edges for the data plane. We have the orchestrator for the management plane. But what about the control plane? What allows these edges to exchange routes and this is something that it's unique to VeloCloud and um, for me who uh, I'm familiar with other ways of doing SD1 I was a bit confused at first however VeloCloud has this concept of gateways so VeloCloud gateways now these are gateways that VMware hosts themselves. There are about, I think, more than a thousand of them spread all around the world and all the big points of presence, um, mostly hosted in, uh, in AWS. And the idea of this gateway is to allow the edges to redistribute routes between them, very similar to um, APGP route reflector. Now, when a gateway is acting as um, a root redistributor and allows the edges to um, spread control information. Um, we also call it the controller. And the idea is that each edge will have a primary and a secondary gateway that we could always talk to. Again, more details in a further session regarding gateways. Now this is where things become even more interesting because the gateways themselves can have 
also a function in the data plane. And the idea is simple. Let's say I don't want to use the hubs to send traffic between my branches. The, let's say my branches might be in Latin America, uh, my hub uh, might be in Europe. So it's actually quite, quite bad if I have to send the traffic all the way there to come back. In this case, I actually can use a gateway in region. The gateway is again set up automatically when the edge comes up, so there's no manual configuration you have to do. And the gateway itself will act as a hub for that particular traffic. Secondly, with the gateway, you can then start doing cloud on ramp. Most um, SD1 solutions don't really have a great answer. They might track things such as Office 365, for example, here uh, with some sort of an IPSLA and make a routing decision based on that. VeloCloud takes a step forward. So each edge will then build a secure tunnel. So this is proprietary to VeloCloud, but it's secured by IPsec, IPv2, and kind of the latest security standards. And then we'll use these tunnels because each branch may have multiple transports, thus multiple tunnels, to then take a decision. I have two tunnels here coming out, going to the cloud gateway, which is my next hub for Office 365 in region. Which of the tunnels can allow Office 365 to run as smoothly as possible? Again, if neither of the tunnels work well, we can then use techniques such as forward error correction and jitter buffer in order to remedy the link as much as we can. So just to recap, I have uh, drawn each piece and also shown how they securely connect to one another. Because again, for most of these things, we are actually using internet as a transport. Um, so it's really important to understand how we secure that communication, right? So again, we have the orchestrator as a management system. It is multi-tenant. It is hosted by VMware in secure data centers. We then have the edges at each site in a physical or virtual form. And then we have these gateways, which have the primary role of a controller, redistributing routes between the edges. But then we also have a data plane role where they push traffic to things such as software as a service, or do third-party uh, IPsec VPNs with, let's call them, legacy sites. So as you can see here, the management is encrypted with TLS 1.2 over TCP 443, and the data itself uses VCMP encrypted with IPsec over UDP 2426. Now, VCMP stands for VeloCloud multi-path protocol and it's where the secret sauce lies but I'm gonna get into more details in a further session. Thank you for watching!